We've got a fun fact-filled video today with five of my very best all around everyday training shoes at five different price points to help your money go that little bit further and get you in the right shoes for you. So sit back, relax, let's get this video done. Great to see you again for another video. And if you're new around here, my name's Ben Parks, 225 Marathon. We do loads of gear and shoe reviews, document my own training, and also loads of running tips to help you out with your journey. And also make the very best running hats and gear. So check out my website, benparks.com. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the best all around shoes at different price points. In my opinion, all of these shoes I've bought 100% with my money and they are what I think is the best shoe you can buy at the various different price points as we go through the video. So what do I mean by everyday shoes? Well, they're simply shoes if you just want a one shoe garage, something that you can do your easy runs, your recovery runs, your speed sessions, even your races, your tempos. It will do all of those fairly well. A lot of people, when they first come into the sport, this is the type of shoe they buy first off. But super quickly, because we do get asked this all the time, is what makes shoes more expensive as you go up the price range? Well, generally, you're just using the very latest materials, the latest foams, and all the research and development that goes into those, they will be in those high-end shoes. The high-end shoes tend to have a little bit of a better design. They just look a little bit more pleasing on the eye. Some people say that there's also better materials, they're a little bit more durable, they'll last a bit longer. In this sort of element of type of shoe, that is probably a little bit true, but in full-on race shoes, it's, as we know, it's definitely not. There's also an element of the higher end brand sponsor a lot of elite athletes. So if you want to run in the shoes of the runners that you follow on social media, they've got to be paid for running in these shoes. So for example, Hoka are generally the most expensive shoes on average across their whole range. And Hoka have to sponsor all of their Hoka elite athletes, Hoka, Naz Elite and all of those people. And you pay for that through the price of the shoes. Anyway, let's get stuck into the shoe. We're gonna start from cheapest to most expensive. So starting out, we're talking about 70 pounds, around about 90 US dollars. Let's have a chat about the Reebok Float Ride version five. I've really enjoyed running this shoe. It is such a good value for money. Coming in around about 70 pounds, you can find it a lot cheaper on the Reebok website if you want to use some discount codes. I've got some on there at the moment for around about 45 pounds. There's a 27 mil stack at the back of the shoe, 19 at the front, eight mil drop overall. It's coming in at 315 grams, a little bit on the heavy side for me in my UK size 12. It's a neutral shoe. There's no different widths available and this was true to size for me. What I really like about this shoe is this update. They've put this sort of X torsion plate on the bottom of the shoe just to correct some of that stability issues the earlier models had, and that is feeling a lot better. A lot better in the corners now as well, a little bit wider versus the outgoing models. Really comfortable and breathable. They've added some ankle padding around the back of the shoe here, which has been a really good addition. And as with a lot of the shoes here, it's just good all around usability. It's okay at speed, it's okay at the cushioning. Everything's a good, solid, okay to get you into the market. In terms of the negative of the shoe, the laces are a little bit short. I did have some a little bit of heel slip issues at the back, and then use some heel lock lacing and it got rid of that. The grip, it's not the best, but it's okay and it will get you going. So yeah, all around, this is the best shoe, I think, in that sort of 70 pounds-ish price bracket at the moment. If you're looking for something else, a little bit of a runner-up, then have a look at the Atreyu base model. That's around about 85 US dollars. It'll probably cost about 85 pounds by the time you've got it to the UK. Right, moving on to around about 100 pounds, around about 130 US dollars. We're talking about the Nike Pegasus 40. So what extra are you getting here by spending that around about extra 30 pounds? You get a lot more durability on a shoe like this. The outsole on the Pegasus is fantastic. And also it's a lot more stable as well. Really good improvements in the Reebok, but this one a lot more stable in the corners. And you're also getting about 40 years of Nike innovation in this shoe and that sort of lockdown and comfort. Right, let's dive in to the details. We're talking about around about 33 mil stack 
Trackite at the back, 23 at the front, 10 mil drop overall, 347 grams, a little bit on the heavy side. It's a neutral shoe. There are different widths available, but this shoe is actually quite wide to start with. And it was true to size for me and there's no plate in the shoe. It just has some AirPods at the front of the shoe and at the back of the shoe, just to help with that comfort and that shock absorption as well. Again, a little bit better than on the Reebok shoe we had looked at before. In terms of what I really like about the shoe, this upper is lovely, really nice and breathable, good airflow through there, very stretchy as well, so wider fitted runners are gonna do well in this shoe. Good lockdown, overall very comfortable. As I said, fantastic durability out of the shoe, 600 miles, no problem. Many people will run a lot, lot more than that. In terms of what I don't like about the shoe, it is getting a little bit on the dated side. There has been no real innovation in this shoe, but it's just a solid, dependable option. The foam in this shoe is very dated. It's not that springy, but for someone going out two, three, four runs a week, this shoe will look after you very well. If you're looking for an alternative, something like the Puma Velocity Nitro 2, that will be around about £105 RRP. Maybe you can find a better deal. Quickly guys, if you are finding this video at all, please smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, check out my website, benparks.com. All of that allows us to carry on making these videos and buy these shoes with our own money. And I'll answer today's question of the day. What is your favorite all around everyday shoe that you like to use in your training? Right, moving on up to around about 130 pounds, 165 US dollars. We are talking about the Hoka Mac 5. So what are you getting with this shoe? Well, you're starting to get some really nice responsive foams come in. So this has Hoka's Pro 5 Plus, this narrow layer of mid foam in here, a little bit more responsive than the Nike shoe, a little bit more reactive, and then a harder wearing EVA outsole on the bottom to help with that all important durability. Right, let's get stuck into the details. So we've got a 29 mil stack at the back, 24 at the front, five mil drop overall, around about 262 grams. So around about 90 grams lighter than the Pegasus shoe as well. Much more fun to run in something like that. It's a neutral shoe. There's no plate in this shoe. There are no different widths available. And this again was true to size for me. So what I really like about this shoe, again, this is probably the most versatile shoe here in the versatile suit shoe section, but this is so, so much of a joy to run in at all different paces. Easy recovery, your sessions, your tempos, races, doing your strides, your long runs. This shoe has you covered. I really like that lightweightness of the shoe. It really feels like you're hardly wearing it at times. It's squishy, but also snappy, and it's much more fun than the Pegasus shoe, and also its sibling, basically, the Clifton. This is definitely the one I prefer in the Hoka range. And then finally, the lockdown of this shoe is fantastic. No blisters, no hot spots, nothing like that. And it's also so smooth to run in through the whole foot stride as well, from landing through to toe off. It just does that so smoothly. There's no sort of resistance or anything like that. Just brings a real smile to your face. In terms of what I don't like about the shoe, the dislikes, there is very little. Um, it is a very lightweight shoe and there's no rubber on the outsole here. So there are some potentially gonna be some durability issues in the long term, but plenty of people do report three to 400 miles, but you're not getting anywhere near like the sort of 600, 700 miles you'll get in the Nike Pegasus. A good alternative to this shoe in this price bracket, something like the Nova Blast 3. With that, you've got a little bit more cushioning. It's a little bit softer than you get with something like this, but for me, not quite as fast and not quite as snappy and fun to run in as the Mac 5. So we've now got 160 pounds to spend, about 200 US dollars, and I am recommending the On Cloud Monster here. So what, what are we talking about a step up here now? Well, you've got that Swiss design and build quality as well. And also you're starting to see some plates appearing in shoes at this sort of level. So this has a thermoplastic plate running through it just to help with that snappiness, that speed, and just a little bit more propulsion as you go along. So this is the first on shoe that I've really enjoyed running in on famous, their famous tagline, running on clouds. But they were the hardest shoes you could ever wish to run in. But this shoe really is finally now like running on clouds. Super soft, super cushioned, but also really responsive as well with that plate in there. 
So let's move on to have a chat about the facts and figures. So we're talking around about a 33 mil stack, six mil drop overall. A little bit on the heavy side, this one, 333 grams for me in my size 12. It's a neutral shoe. There is a thermoplastic plate in the shoe, as I said, which just helps with that propulsion. And it was true to size for me. And there are no different widths available. So what did I really like about this shoe? It's really soft, it's really squishy, but with that plate in there, it really propels you forward. I really do feel like I'm running using a lot less energy using this shoe. It's looking after your body and your joints and everything with that cushioning, but then bringing a smile to your face with how fast you're going using a minimal amount of effort. It's also really stable at all paces, so recovery pace, easy pace. When I took it up to some good speeds and rep pace and things there, it felt super stable, felt really confident in the shoe as well. And it's fast. I wouldn't want to race in it. It's a little bit heavy for that, but for that all round, that long run, something to do some sessions in it really does have all those boxes covered really well really good lockdown in the shoe straight out the box just putting it on it just wants you to get up on your toes didn't have any issues or any blisters or hot spots or anything like that in terms of the negatives I know I did buy this colorway. I think this is a pretty, it's just all black, but it's really not for me, but it was the only colorway I could find in my UK size 12. I really personally don't like the looks, but I know a lot of you will disagree because a lot of people love on shoes. Let me know down in the comments, what do you think about on shoes and how they look? But apart from the price, you are paying a bit of a premium for that Swiss brand. There, there really aren't many negatives to the Cloud Monster. A lot of people do come to me and say they want to get an on shoe, they want to try it. They see a lot of people now using this shoe. This would be a really good place to start because as I say, it's super soft, it's cushioned and it's responsive and it has all those boxes ticked. A lot of the issues are a little bit on the hard side. Great for some people, not for me. I need like a little bit of cushioning. If you are looking for something else at this price point, have a look at the New Balance 1080 version 12. I'm not sure when 13 is coming out, but yeah, this, uh, the, the Cloud Monster is a little bit on the narrow side. So if you do have some narrow feet, then something like the 1080 will be a little bit better for you. And it does come in some extra wide options as well. Right, moving on to the most expensive all-round shoe now. Right now, at two hundred pounds, around two hundred and fifty dollars. We're talking the Asics Super Blast, one of the best-rated shoes of all time, and one of my absolute favourites. This shoe is. Fantastic. So what are you getting with this shoe? Well, you're getting Asics's very premium, massive chunk of the FF Turbo Foam in here. There's no plate in this shoe, but it is reasonably stiff anyway. Just a fantastic training shoe that is super lightweight as well. The very latest materials in a shoe like this. So in terms of the facts and figures, 46 mil stack height at the back of the shoe. Huge, big chunk of foam there to look after you. 38 mil at the front, eight mil drop overall. For me, around about 290 grams. It's a neutral shoe. There's no plate in this shoe. And also this shoe wasn't true to size for me. I did have to get half a size down. What I really like about the shoe is it is so stable. You feel so planted in the corners. It is a really wide shoe as well. The really solid base there. It really inspires you with that confidence that this shoe can really work for you. This is without doubt the smoothest, most beautiful shoe I've ever run in, in terms of just how lovely it moves across the ground. The toe off is fantastic. Fantastic. It's got quite a big rocker there, but it really feels so smooth. With that lightweightness as well, you really feel like you're not wearing anything. Your feet just circle really nicely, landing on that midfoot just circle really nicely underneath you. It just feels really sort of a really natural shoe to be running in. It's also supremely comfortable, very versatile. Whatever you're doing, you could race in this shoe. If you don't want a carbon plate for racing, this shoe could do that, sessions. And also you can you can plod along at your recovery run pace. It really can do absolutely everything. Like a lot of these shoes, if you're just going on holiday, you want to take one shoe with you, any of these will do that well. And this is one of my absolute favorites at the moment. In terms of the negatives, really it is just the price. I cannot fault this shoe in any other way other than charging nearly 200 pounds for a shoe that doesn't have a carbon plate in. But I suppose it is around 50 pounds cheaper than the carbon plate super shoes. We'll come on to those in the next video. So there we are guys, five fantastic shoes there to check out at various different price points. Let us know what your favorite ones are. For me, it's all about the Super Blast. I spent the money on it and I'm gonna get all the value I can of it. It's a fantastic shoe. But whatever you go for, you're gonna be looked after really well. It's really interesting, does price matter? Well, I did make a video a few weeks ago testing out the cheapest shoe from all the big manufacturers. So that one's coming up next, so make sure you check that one out. So that's it from me, lots of love. Let us know your favorites down in the comments. Keep on working hard and keep on getting done. We'll see you in the next one.